Wherever Chinese people go, one will find Chinese food and Chinese herbs. Though Chinese herbal medicine has been widely used in North America for well over a century and continues to gain popularity, it still remains largely misunderstood by most Americans. Chinese herbal medicine is the result of countless hours of clinical trials, experiments and refinements conducted over 20 centuries by the brightest minds of Chinese medicine. The history of Chinese medicine with its successes and failures has been meticulously recorded and passed down to the next generations of physicians to study and expand upon. Despite Chinese herbal medicine's remarkable efficacy and safety record, there remain several hurdles before they can fully be embraced by Americans. Where did these herbs come from? Are they safe? And do they work? To help answer these questions, Dr. Willow Liu founded the American Association of Chinese Herbs in 2015. Dr. Liu is a doctor of Chinese medicine who received her PhD in China and has performed research and clinical practice of Chinese herbal medicine for over 30 years in China, Germany, and the U.S. In April of 2017, to promote Chinese herbal medicine to more Americans, Dr. Liu arranged a trip to China. As an American student of Chinese medicine, I was invited as a participant. The goal of the trip was to learn about the history of Chinese herbal medicine, the use of Chinese herbal medicine in modern day China, the safety measures employed to farm and produce the herbs, and the role of modern research to better understand and expand the way in which Chinese herbal medicines are used. The first leg of our tour is Shanto, a southern Chinese coastal city in Guangdong province, about 200 miles due east of Canton a place with a historically rich history of using herbal medicines. We visit the Museum of Chinese Medicine built by Tian Tang, a pharmaceutical group manufacturing Chinese herbal products with a family history spanning 14 generations of Chinese doctors. It is the largest museum in China built to a family practice of medicine. Inside the museum's vast chambers, we enjoy glimpses into the ancient techniques used to produce herbal medicines. Just above the museum, in the same building, we are led into a state-of-the-art factory that produces a commonly prescribed herbal medicine for infertility. Behind glass, stainless steel machines hum with activity, each room a different part of the medicine's process from raw herbs to ready-to-consume pills. In an adjacent building, towering stainless steel vats like a brewery churn, a type of alcohol used for the extraction of herbal materials. In a control room, we observe a small team sitting behind remote keyboards managing the whole operation on a giant interactive computer screen. The next stop the group makes is in the ancient city of Bozhou, located in the northwest of Anhui province, home of China's largest wholesale herbal market, the Kangmei Chinese Medicine City. The herb market itself looks more like a sports stadium than a pharmacy. Inside the vast marketplace, hundreds of vendors sell all types of herbs, displayed in humble sacks opened so that buyers may easily examine them. Not far from the herb market, our hosts lead us to a factory that cleans and processes raw herbs carefully selected at market. We are invited to view the company's modern quality controlled labs and witness the processing. Here in Bojo, the ancient art of herbal medicine has embraced the technological advances of the 21st century. In the afternoon, we visit the shrine built at the birthplace of the great 2nd century physician Hua Tuo, a famed physician and giant in the history of Chinese medicine. Nearby, in the drizzle, we drive through vast fields of breathtaking white peonies, whose roots are prized for their strong medicinal value. Our first destination in Shanghai is the Shanghai University of Traditional Chinese Medicine. We meet Dr. Yan Xiaotian, the director of the International Education College, who arranged our visit. The university is both grand and inviting. Near the entrance of the campus is the Shanghai Museum of Traditional Chinese Medicine a beautifully designed museum that combines both modern and traditional aesthetics, it elegantly features herbs both rare and commonplace. Adjacent to the museum is the College of Chinese Material Medicine, one of the most advanced research centers for Chinese herbal medicine in the world. 
Dr. Xu Hong Shi, the dean of the college, who introduces himself as Kevin, gives us a tour of his research facility, labs full of very sophisticated diagnostic machines. We discuss some of the current research projects his team is working on, including isolating herbal compounds to treat cervical cancer. We visit the Institute of Chinese Materia Medica, a separate wing that is actively engaged in the research and development of Chinese herbs. Dr. Wang Zheng Tao, the director of the institute, gives us an introduction about their work to standardize Chinese herbs by qualifying and quantifying their active and inactive ingredients. It's an exciting moment in the history of Chinese herbal medicine. There's a research frenzy in China to build on what is known of the traditional uses of herbs and, with the help of the most modern research tools available, to identify the molecular components of the herbs in the hopes of finding cures to some of today's most challenging diseases. Nearby the university campus, we visit the busy Shu Guang Hospital, an integrative hospital that offers the best of both Chinese and Western medicine. Established 110 years ago, it is among China's oldest and most advanced traditional Chinese medicine hospitals. Here, Chinese herbal medicine plays a vital role in the treatment of countless patients. The last leg of our trip is Beijing, where we visit the China Academy of Chinese Medicine Sciences. This is where Dr. Tu Youyou conducted her studies in the 1970s that led to the discovery of artemisinin, a compound extracted from a commonly used Chinese herb, artemisia, as a highly effective cure for malaria. Dr. Tu was awarded the 2015 Nobel Prize in Medicine for her achievement. Her discovery has helped save millions of lives around the world. Fittingly, our final stop is the Academy's library where we are invited to see ancient copies of some of the most important books in the Chinese medical canon, including the Yellow Emperor's Classic of Internal Medicine and Li Shi Zhen's Ming Dynasty classic, The Compendium of Materia Medica. Even now, as the science of Chinese herbal medicine moves forward in the age of technology, it constantly seeks guidance from the works of the ancient masters. Far from a relic of the past, Chinese herbal medicine is proving to be a vital ally in combating sickness not only in China, but here in the United States and around the globe.